here. I'm Casey Christensen. Um, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I live in West Kelowna, which is a great place to live, except today it's a little bit chilly, a little bit chilly, but not raining. It rained this, rained this morning a little bit, but it's actually quite sunny and lovely right now. So, so um, I thought I'd pop on at my live at four and show you what I've been up to today. I've been playing with some different things that I have. I made this uh, this cute little um, ladybug card, a little fancy fold card here, and they seem to be lagging terribly. Okay, hang on a second. Let's see if I can fix that. Okay, shall we try that again? I don't know if I'm back on or not. Got a little glitch there. Okay, I appear to be I appear to be here. So um, again, I'm Casey Christensen, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator living in West Kelowna, BC, Canada, in my in my happy place. And today I thought I would play a game with the Hello Ladybug stamp set. I love this ladybug stamp set. Comes with a punch, which should be sitting right here, but for some unknown reason it isn't. Here's the punch, comes with a punch uh, if you buy the bundle. And also an older stamp that's been, that's also usable with this set is the smaller of the uh, punch from Daisy Lane. Okay, so we're gonna use that today. So this is the ladybug card I made earlier on today, just playing with um, some of my new paper. And I'm going to do a bumblebee card instead. So let's get going. I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way. And we're going to use the uh, both punches. And we're going to work with bumblebees. I love bumblebees. They're kind of my favorite. They're kind of my spirit animal, I think. But uh, So we're going to start with, I'm going to tell you some of the cutting. I did the cutting in advance just because sometimes it takes up too much of my um, my live time to do the cutting. So I've done the cutting in advance. So because I'm doing a black and white and yellow card today, I um, <clears throat> have cut my pieces. This first piece here is a four and a quarter by eight and a quarter, and then it's scored at five and a half, which brings it to the usual size of five and a half by four and a quarter inch card. Hi, Kimmy. Next, I have my other inside portion of my card. I'll show you what we're making, Kim. We're making this beautiful um, fun fold card. It looks hard, but it's actually quite quite easy to do once you have the measurements down. And um, because I've already done ladybugs today, we're going to do bumblebees because I thought bumblebees would be fun. So just getting our card bits together. If you want these measurements, Kim, you can ask me and I'll, I'll send them to you later. So this first piece is four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And that's your your basic cardstock, whether it be red or black. I'm doing black now because I want to do black and yellow for this card. My next inside piece here is um, three inches by eight inches. And then that just gets uh, scored in half. So it will be scored at four inches. Okay. So there we have that bit. And then we want to decorate these. So this inside piece of DSP is going to be four by five and a quarter. And that's what I'm putting in there is that piece. And there's also an inside piece in here, which is where we would be writing on, doing our sentiment. That's two and three quarters by three and three quarters. So that pops in there. This piece here, as you know, I love to color on black and white DSP. So that's what I'm going to do there. Okay. And then our last bit here is going to be Bumblebee um, from my hive embossing folder. I'm going to do an embossing in the bumblebee cardstock. So let's let me do that first. I'm going to do it over here so I don't have to take up deck space. There we go. That's my workout for the day. So I'm using my hive embossing folder and again like every other embossing folder you um, you want to Put it into the machine fold side first 
and you want to make sure your Stampin' Up! is looking at you because if it's not, you're going to have your embossing kind of upside down. But that's really up to you which way you want it. If you look at it here, it's it's uh, this is debossed and this is embossed and I kind of like the embossed side. I kind of like the hollows. So that's what I'm going to use today, but that's really your own decision. So you decide what, which way you'd like it to be. So we're going to kind of put this card together a little bit, and then we're going to play with our little critters. We're going to do the easy part first, and then the fun part second. They're both easy, but we'll do this bit first. So this is my DSP that I just got the other day. It's called... Sorry, I should have had that hand before you, but... It's called, well, it is, it's pers It's really a personal thing, but I think when it's this way, it looks more like a beehive than it does this way, because this way it just looks like a lot of bumps, right? So I like this side. That's the side that you're intended to use, and I'm using this perfectly penciled paper, which I already know I'm going to need some more of, because I do very much like to, to um, color in my paper, and I'm going to do a little extra coloring in today that I think you might find fun. So let's just pop this down first. I've been out and all over the place today getting things organized and uh, I'm trying to work tidier but you know I think I may have to come to terms with the fact that I'm not a tidy worker. I mean I like what I'm doing and I, but I, I just seem to make a mess whenever I do it and I think it's time I just decided that you know that's okay I can just make a mess. I know when I can't see the top of my desk anymore, that's where I have to draw the line. So that's our first piece that goes down on our card area. The next piece that's going to go down is going to go here. Now, I when you do this, you want to do it from the front here. So you can make sure that these bits here are going to line up as they should. But first, let's give it some color, okay? I want to give it some color. Now, this card's going to be primarily... Uh, bees and flowers because we're going to use our, our daisy punch this time as well as our uh, ladybug punch so I want to give it a little color so I'm going to give my flowers some yellow color <clears throat> on this one I did my flowers in red I added red to my uh, flowers this one I'm going to do yellow because my card is going to be primarily yellow and black rather than red and black so let's get my yellow out here and I'm just going to, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to add color where they ha had shadowing, little bits of color. Nothing too intense, just some color. We're not even concerned exactly where it goes, just give it some less than plain black and white. And I am going to do every flower, I think, because I think it looks nice. I'm just giving it tiny bits of, of color. It's really not even coloring, it's just almost like just dotting. And just give that a little, you know, give the paper a little, a little life. And we're doing it yellow because our bees are going to be yellow. My husband's gotten the trailer out today, getting it all ready because we're going camping soon. Now these, uh, these leaves here, they're pretty black, but I found that if I took a little bit of the Granny apple green, the light granny apple green, I could add a little green to them, just a little bit, okay, just to add a little more color than black and white. You can hardly see it, but it's there. Some areas you can see it more than others, but uh, just to give it a little bit more color. I'm just giving it a hit, just about every, every leaf, I'm just giving a little hit of the green, and it's very subtle, you can barely see it at all but it is there okay so next we're gonna add some tape to this i love that tom stampin up put shadowing on things for us to go by because you know if the thing was blank i'm not sure how good i would be at doing the shadowing but i like that they do a lot of um, shadowing of the stamps as well as of the paper so you see what I mean here when I line this up? I want to make sure that it's lined up with the paper that's here. Okay, because it would kind of stick out like a sore th thumb if it was not. 
So that's my first piece of my card. And here's my second piece. So this piece is going to go on here like this. It's really quite simple. Okay. So that's my first piece. Now this, I'm just going to stick this on here because this is the part where you're going to put your sentiment and you can decide whether you want to go in later. I leave a lot of my cards blank and I fill them in as I go. But because this one is just put on cardstock to cardstock, I feel like I could easily go in and just stamp happy birthday on that with a stamp or just write it myself, either either, right? So now we're going to put this piece down and I'm trying to decide, yeah, I'm going to put it all the way down, which means I'm going to use some glue because it's really hard to get in the nooks and crannies here. If you're using tapes, you got a lot of uneven cardstock here. So I'm going to use glue to put that down. And just be sure you've got the side that you want to have up there. I want to have the indented side or the embossed instead of the debossed. So I'm just going to give that a nice layer of glue all the way around. Keep in mind that when you emboss, the paper is weakened somewhat. Not that that's a bad thing, it's not. But it can make it a little tougher to handle. For me anyways, like it's harder for me to hold it up to put my glue on when it's yeah. you see where we're going with that that's pretty cute right I just want to make sure that's stuck down all the way around we want it stuck down all the way around and it's not so I'm just going to add a little bit of well there we go a little bit of glue on the edges there so now we have a very decidedly yellow and black card rather than a a um, red and black card but same sort of paper same sort of idea okay and there's lots of different things you can do with this particular fold so I really love this fold all right so now that we've got that sort of good to go let's set that aside for a minute because we're going to play with our, our critters so as you can see here we've got our ladybug punch but what we're going to do is we're going to take our striped paper out of this. And you can use any striped paper that you have. But I just kind of really, really like the striped paper that came in this perfectly penciled, which is why I need some more. Because it's in particular, it's the striped paper that I seem to be uh, enamored with the most. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ladybug punch here and I'm going to pop my paper in. And what I want to do is these two little edges here, these little two rounded edges, which would be where the ladybug's head starts, I guess. There's two edges here. You want to line those up evenly on a stripe because that way you can get the stripes of the body. I must have paper stuck in here. I can't get it to go in. That way you'll have the stripes of your body relatively even see what i've got there so i've got those two points where the head would be kind of lined up on a line and there we go so there's my my bumblebee then i need to have and didn't i put it away why would i do that why would i put it away when i need it there we go so for each one we need to have a striped body piece and then we need in black we're going to do a regular body piece i'll just pop that in there a regular body piece and then we also need to get a little piece of vellum just your average vellum i've just got a little piece here so we also need a piece of vellum and we're going to make some wings with the vellum Yep, I've got paper stuck in there. All right. So let's make a... Just pop that in there wherever it's happy. And get yourself a little leaf. And then we also need a little leaf. We're going to use these from different, for different purposes. So in this instant, these are wings. But we also need some leaves. So I'm going to punch out another of those wings. 
because we're going to use it for leaves, okay? So here we are with the nice uh, pear pizzazz, I think. Grab myself a, a leaf. And then back to the punch from the Daisy Lane, which has gone into the new catalog. The uh, large one didn't make it into the new catalog, but the, the small one didn't. As you can see, there it is, right there. And that's our little, our little Daisy. So what we need for that is... Oh, I'm I'm way ahead of myself. I put things away when I when I shouldn't have. <clears throat> Let me just grab that again. I thought I was tidying up because my room was so messy I couldn't function any longer. So I guess I shouldn't really have tidied up quite so much. So I'm gonna take our daffodil delight. Should I use daffodil delight? Yeah, I think I will. No, I'm not, actually. I'm lying to myself. That's why I didn't have the yellow paper out, because I'm not using the yellow paper. That's it. All right, so let's get a piece of white cardstock. We're going to take our <coughs> Daffodil Delight stamp pad. And I've got... Let's see if I can do this with just the stamp and not the stamparatus this time but we may have to resort to the to the stamparatus there we go so we're going to take our little um daisy and we're going to stamp that out and we're going to stamp two of them actually yeah that looks nice Muscles. There we go. There's two of those. So let's play with our flower first. We want to make a flower and some bees. So let's play with our flower first. And for the flower, I just uh, I've just stamped out two of these. Now I'm gonna cut them with my handy punch. There's one. And there's another. So I think two is enough. We'll just put that aside. Whew, getting warm in here. Got to take off my jacket. I always think I'm cold when I'm wandering around. You know, I, I do the stamp around. It just, it just depends on how I'm feeling at the time and whether or not. Sometimes it's not you, Kim. Sometimes it's whether or not the stamp gives you that full coverage without using the stamp apparatus. And sometimes it does, and sometimes it does not. So that's just a, it's just a thing. So I want to put my flowers together. So I'm going to use a little bit of glue in the center of my flower here. Just a tad. And I'll pop my other flower on top of it. Trying as hard as I can to get my coverage good. You have a little room to move after you've glued it. So there's my pretty little flower right there. And then I want to have a center. So I'm actually going to use a little tiny stamp that's in my set here, and I'm going to create a little uh, stamped center. It's this little teeny bit here. It's, uh, it's this little guy right here. So we're going to use that. It is a flower center here. Okay. So we're going to use that, and we're going to do that in crumb cake because I do like it when it's this, it, when it's tone on tone to the paper so it's not really really jumping out like like something else and I'm not actually going to stamp a circle I'm going to stamp a little cluster just like that I've stamped three of them all in a row and I'm going to do that again I'm going to have two flowers. Oh, a little bit more of a cluster. No, that one doesn't look as good. I need to get it closer to myself to stamp it. Sorry, but you'll see it in a minute. There we go. I got my little clusters. Because what I want to do here is...
I have a little a little tiny punch here which Stampin' Up! does not sell unfortunately and they don't sell a, a they don't sell a little thing that's quite small enough so I'm just going to cheat for a second don't look Mm, scissors. I just want to create a little flower center there. This is a 3 8 inch punch and I, I wish we sold one because I, I like using it but it's not a Stampin' Up! item so we're going to pretend that you didn't see that. There we go. There's my little flower centers. And then all I need to do is put a drop of glue here and drop a center on it. Now you could use a dimensional if you want to, but I did for one and it didn't quite look right. And I don't, don't exactly know why. I've got one here that I made earlier, so I'm just going to pop that one on too. Okay, and then remember we punched out some leaves. So I don't like just plain um, cardstock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, uh, this little stamp right here, that's a little tiny selection of three dots. And I'm going to put that on the teeny tiny uh, stamping block. And I'm going to give my green cardstock a little life by adding some stamping to it, just a little bit, N nothing too much, just a little. And just give it a first generation stamping, just a few. It just gives it a little something, right? Right? Just a little bit. And I quite like that. So now I'm going to put a little bit of glue. I'm going to put the glue on my leaves so that I can see where I want to drop my flower onto it. And I think about there is good. So there, we've created a little flower and I have another one that I did earlier. Um, I don't know if we'll use them both, but we'll see. Okay, just want to show you how to make them. And next we're going to do our little bumblebee. So get yourself out a piece of, uh, I, I, I need to, I need to get a piece of paper out so I don't get stuff everywhere. Otherwise, I do get stuff everywhere. So I'll get this little piece out here, and I'm going to grab my my little bumblebees, and I'm going to use, uh, what have I got here? Dark Mango Melody, but any yellow will do. It just depends on what color you want it to be. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the head as my handle because we're cutting the head off, okay? Use the head as your handle. And just give yourself no I don't like that not using it change my mind I'm using uh, the, the, the dark daffodil delight okay so I'm just going to hang on to the head and I'm going to bring that color across like so okay bumblebee style all right let's give us another one Look at that. How cute are those? How cute are those? All right. So next we're going to take our little, whoop, I need to add a little color at the very bottoms of those. I guess I missed that. And that's not the one I want. That one is dried up. Going to have to buy myself a new one. A little bit across the bottom there. Now, we're going to just take our scissors and we'll just cut our bumblebee heads off. That wasn't very nice, was it? I kind of live off trial and error, Kim. Kind of what I do. Okay. So now... We're just going to take our bodies, our little bodies. Oh, I guess I cut a whole bunch of those, didn't I? I must have been very ambitious as to how many, 
how many bumblebees I could fit on this card. All right, so let's get some dimensionals. And there we go. I'm going to put the dimensionals on the bugs themselves, on the black bodies. I'm going to put them on the black bodies. I don't know why, it just felt easier that way to me. And two ought to do it, however you want to put them. And we're just going to take our bee bodies. And we're going to pop them onto our ladybugs. Well, I guess they're not ladybugs anymore. They're bees now. We're going to pop them on there anyway. Cute. Super cute. I love them. All right. So next, let's get our wings. Now, our wings are going to go on with um, mini dots. And, and the cool thing about those is, here they are right here. The cool thing about those is they're pretty much invisible, although not entirely invisible. So I'll show you how I manage that so that they don't show through. So I'm just going to put, um, I had that in my hand. Where, where did it go? It was right in my hand. Here it is. I'm just going to grab a mini glue dot here. And I'm going to put it in the middle of this wing. Okay. I'll put one in each. Right in the middle. There we go. What do you mean the time change? Oh, um, 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 well, it's Eastern over there, so are we later or earlier? I, I suck at that, Tim. I, Kim, I can tell you right now. I am not, I'm the last person to ask what time it is somewhere else because I don't have a clue. I just don't have a clue. Um, but they are two hours ahead of us, I believe. So you might want to think about before 10 ish or something like that. All right, so let's take our little wing, guys. And take off your dots. And you're just going to pop those little wings right there over top. Now, if you look really carefully and closely, you can see that glue dot, but not enough that I'd be concerned about it. However, we're going to mask that anyways, so it won't matter. And there we go. How cute are those? Those are our little bumblebees. Now let's get some dots. And what we can do is we can take the smallest dot and just pop him over where the glue dot is. Okay. And actually it looks quite cute there. So there you go. There's our little, there's our little bee. Isn't it cute? Okay, so we got our bees and we got our flowers. Now what you can do with the flowers is pop these up a little bit. Don't leave them looking so dull and uninteresting and flattened down. Pop them up a little bit. Give your card a little dimension so it doesn't look quite as flat. Okay. There, so we got a couple of flowers and a couple of bumblebees. So let's have a look at this. Now, when you go to put this on, so I'm going to do that next because I can I can decorate this while it's on the card, which is kind of how I prefer to do it because then I can see uh, where things go. So kind of have an idea where you're going to do it. And for me, my idea is that this line of my card is kind of on this line of my DSP behind it, but keeping in mind that these lines are not straight, okay? They're very abstract, and so they're not straight. So I kind of have an idea of where I want that to be. 
So what I'm going to do is making sure you've got it the right way here. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to add my glue. I want to use glue because it's going to be a, a better way to do this so I have room to move if I don't put it down in exactly the right spot right out of the gate. Okay. So I'm just going to take this like so. I'm going to plant it round about where I think it goes and then I can move it and I'm aiming for it to be somewhat centered although I didn't do a good job of that between somewhat centered between here and there okay and I'm okay with that it's not perfectly centered but that's okay I'm, I'm just not that fussy with myself anymore so now we're going to take some little flowers and we'll pop those on with dimensionals. And when you put these on, I'm going to put on, let's see, I want to see where it's going to go. I'm just going to put on the one right here because I want my leaves to extend out the, um, the back of that. So and give it a really good press so that it will go into that um, beehive embossing. There's one there. Let's do another one down here. And you're just going to play with this and figure out where you want your things to be. Be aware that you're not going to have any glue or embossing on this these leaves out here. Otherwise, when you open and close the card, they will stick to it, okay? Now, because I've set this a little bit off kilter, what my mind tells me that I can do is, see, it's a little bit of a difference between here and there. I'm going to set my flower over here to distract from that fact. I'm camouflaging my oopsie is what, basically what I'm doing there. Okay, so there. There's my two flowers. All right. So I got my flowers. Now let's get my bees. Now think about where your bees are going to be so that you're not putting dimensionals where they shouldn't be. Okay. I like that bee sort of like that. I think. Or maybe like that. I want room for my uh, sentiment because I did a I did an embossed sentiment that I thought I'd share with you. Thank you, Dorothy. Yeah, they're fun. They're fun. This is a really fun set. There's there's lots of possibilities with this set. So I'm going to put one down there so I can put two dimensionals right here because they won't be in the way of my daisy that's already popped up. Right? We don't want to get in the way of things that already have dimensionals on them. So I'm going to pop him right about there. Okay, and then this guy is going to go I guess about like that. Okay, so each flower has a a wee bumblebee on it. It's pretty, right? I quite like that. So I did a, um, I think I have time to show you what I did here. I really like all the colors that come in the Stampin' Up! Uh, color arrangement, but I also really like um, heat embossing. Uh, can you see at all, I'm trying to hold this up closely, can you see that my writing is shiny and it, it jumps up off the paper? I don't know if you can see that or not, but it kind of jumps up off the paper. I love to do that. It's one of my favorite things to do. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm going to do mine in black though this time. So I did that in the, in the green because I was able to use my clear embossing um, powder. With the clear embossing powder, you can basically turn any of your beautiful Stampin' Up! colors into embossing. So let's just get this 
here. I'm going to get a piece of paper. No, not that piece because it's got stuff on the back. So is that one. What have I done? Half of my pieces here have stuff on the back. Yeah. I seem to have an excess of pieces that have... Here we go. There's one. So let's put that in there. I'm going to tuck it into the corner. And I'm going to start by... I'm going to use this, uh, the one I did that I just showed you. I'm going to may your greatest wish come true. So I'm going to go with that one because it's bigger and you can see it better. So I'm going to put that down here. And actually, you know, it seems wasteful. It isn't. It won't be. I'm going to start by whenever you're going to emboss, you need to use an embossing buddy. And for whatever reason, Stampin' Up! doesn't carry these anymore, but they are available. You can get them. It's just a little powdery, chalky thing here, and you just want to roll it around on the area that you're going to emboss. And what that does is it prevents any embossing powder um, from getting anywhere that it doesn't belong. Because if there's embossing powder where it doesn't belong, it means you're going to have little markings where they don't belong. So I'm going to pop that down right in the middle of that. Okay? And I'm going to stick it on there. Now, next I'm going to take my... Make sure everything's tucked into the corner, remember? Next, I'm going to take my color. And I really wish I had, um, I wish I had mini dot, the Stampin' Dots for this, because I always seem to get the color all over my Stamparatus and not so much on the stamp. And that's why we're using the Stamparatus, is because I know I'm going to have to do this more than once. I already know. Okay, so we pop that closed. There's my little stamping in color. And that actually looks pretty good, but I'm going to do it one more time. I just want to do it one more time because I want it to be a pretty bright um, stamp. And a little push, a little push, a little push. Okay. Now that I've done that, I'm going to make sure everything is properly lined up here. And I'm not going to remove my stamp but I am going to clean it, okay? I want it to be clean. So we're just going to leave it right where it is and give it a little dab. Clean it up a little bit. And then I'm going to take my Versamark. Versamark is meant for embossing, okay? And it's clear. You can't see it, but you just have to sort of trust yourself that it's there. And by trusting yourself, I mean stamp it twice because, I don't know, it, it can't hurt, right? So what, And the reason that you want to wash it first is I made a little goof this afternoon. You can see that I've got green ink on my uh, Versamark pad now. Not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. If it were black, maybe that might be a problem, but it's not the end of the world, okay? So I'm just going to ink up or Versamark up my stamp in exactly the same position as it was before. Pop it down on there, give it a good push, and it is going to stick, so make sure you're, you're uh, lining stuff back up again in the corner before you do it again. I am going to do it again, and you can, if you look at it under a certain light, you can't see it, but I can, you can tell if you've got the coverage you need or not. Versamark is pretty, pretty good that way. You, you're able to see where you've got Versamark, okay? Okay, so I'm just going to look at that under the light, and I can see, you can't, but I can see that I've got Versamark in all the right places, in all the right amounts. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my my uh, embossing tray. Now, I don't know if Stampin' Up! has these or not. I can't remember. I know they did at one point. And I'm going to take my clear embossing powder. A spoon would have been a good idea because this is a big container. But I'm going to take my clear. Now, I don't think Stampin' Up! does clear, but they're not going to come and arrest you if you use other things. They do black and white and gold and silver, I believe. And those are gorgeous as well. I'm sure you've seen gold. When we get into doing the Christmas um, stuff, you'll see um, how fun it is to use the gold. So I've done a pretty good dumping of that on there, and as well as the dumping, 
I'm going to shush it around a little bit and just make a make sure it's nicely covered. And once I put it down, and don't anyone tell my husband I do this, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to flick it like this, right? Not on my table. I'm going to do it when I turn around, but I'm going to flick it like that. And get the rest of the powder off. And then before you get out your blower, it's always a good idea to put the powder away, because if you don't, guess what? It's going to be everywhere. So get rid of that before you get out your your heat tool. Your heat tool you can buy at Stampin' Up. It's a great, great tool. And uh, so here's my heat tool. And I just happen to have this neat little board to uh, put my, because it gets hot, right? I have this nice little board. So pardon the noise. It's going to get noisy for a minute. And I'm just going to heat this up. And it's like a little magic trick when you do this. And then you've got this beautiful, shiny, beautiful, shiny, granny apple green sentiment. Now let me explain to you how this stuff works so that you know what you're doing. And because you can't see it as well as I can see it here, um, I thought it would be nice for you to know how it works. Okay, so what we do is we lay on our color first, right? We're going to do two, two layers of color so it's a nice rich color. Then on top of that, we're going to clean and use our Versamark, which is a really sticky, sticky, sticky situation. It's quite sticky. And don't ever forget your embossing buddy. If I hadn't put the embossing buddy on there, I may have gotten, it wouldn't be green because it's because of the stamping, but say I was doing that in black, then I might have little black dots all around where the, the powder has moved and stayed. So what embossing powder is, it's actually plastic. And so when you lay it down on the Versamark and then apply heat to it, it melts, okay? And it melts to where your Versamark is. So I have this beautiful, um, may your greatest wish come true in a nice, shiny, but beautiful, granny apple green okay which i love so let's find something that we can cut that with i think i'd just like to use a small circle let's see what i've got let's see what i've got here that i can use i don't want anything too big Okay, let's see what punches I have. I might have to fussy cut around this one because it just doesn't really have, I don't really have anything that I can cut that with. I'm still waiting for some other um, bits to arrive. So, uh, let's see. Is there something in here? This is that Tasteful Touches that I used yesterday. I wonder if one of those would work. I don't think that'll work. That's a little bit too small. And I have these two circles, but that one feels a little bit too big. So I'm thinking I might be SOL for a die to do that with. So I am just going to cut around it, okay? I am just going to cut around it because I don't want it to be too, oh wait, maybe I have, maybe I have, let's see, stitched whimsy. I feel like I'm missing, oh here they are, okay, my rectangle dies. Let's see if there's something in here that might do the trick. This is my stitched rectangles. And the answer to that question is, maybe, maybe there is. How about this one? Oh. Yeah, how about that one?
Now I'm going to show you how I do this. This one is bigger than I want it to be. So I'm actually going to cheat a little bit. Let's get out my little embossing machine. I do like the idea of the stitching, but it's uh, a little bit, it's a little bit bigger than I want it to be. I like the, the area around my um, die cuts to be a little bit um, tighter than that. So I'm going to do a little trick here that I do quite often actually when something's not exactly the right size. I'm going to start out by, I'm going to use some washi tape and I'm going to start out by cutting this quite tight. And by that I mean my, my, um, my sentiments can be really tight in the top. Okay. So I've got on that. See how there's all this empty space here? I don't like that at all. So I'm just going to start out by doing this. Pop that in. Remember to stagger your plates. You work so much better if you do that. And I'm going to go over this a couple of times because I want those indents to be really strong the indents left by the stitched part. Okay, so there you go. May your greatest wish come true. So you see I've got my little piece there. So what I can do now is flip it on over and I can lay my piece back down on here And I can actually feel it grab right back on to the existing grooves. Okay. See what I see what I mean there? And I'll pop it right back in. And what I should get is a nice shape that's the right size for my card. Okay, Okay. let's see how that worked. You can actually see on the back, do you see how it just popped into its existing grooves there? So I was able to make a nice uh, square shape, right? And that way you can get any size you want. I mean, especially when you're dealing with something that's like a banner. Say you've got a banner and your banner's that long, but your wording is like a half an inch shorter or a quarter of an inch shorter. You can just do that. You can just pop it on and pop it right back on again because it will fall into those grooves. So here I have this cute little somewhat square. It's not entirely square or I could have used square dies. It's not square, but somewhat square piece that I can add to my card. Okay. And I think I'm going to pop that right down there in the corner there where it looks pretty. And I'm going to use a couple of dimensionals. I do want it to pop up a little. I do want it to pop up. Oh, I, I have it in my hand. I'm so good at losing things. I don't know. I, I spent uh, the day on, on online with my friend Susan today. And between the two of us, oh my goodness. Because you know why? Because we were both working in super messy spaces. But neither one of us wanted to stop what we were doing to clean up our space. That's a downfall of mine. I, I tend to, to work in chaos and then wonder why it's chaotic, you know. So now I'm going to pop this down with not very much of my beehive showing around it, right? Because I just think it's really pretty, just like that. Okay. So this is not a difficult card. If you'd like me to post the measurements, I will. This is not a difficult card at all, but it's very effective right? Like someone would look at it and go, oh my god, you made that? Why, yes I did. But you know what? When you've got the measurements, it's a pretty simple endeavor. We have a little bit of stamping. So let's add some black dots, of course. That's all I have right now. I'm still waiting for some things to come. And of course on the first, well, on the first I'm going to go crazy and uh, order a whole bunch of fun new things for you to play with. I do have some 
other brand new uh, sets for you to for, for us to play with too. I might drag one of them out tomorrow. So, and these dots are just perfect. They fit right into your little hive there. I'm going to use a, a big one and a couple of little ones, I think. Maybe one over here. Maybe one over there. Maybe one over. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Where should I put another one? How about right there? How cute is that, right? So now you know if you get into this stamp set, you can make bumblebees and ladybugs. Isn't that fun? So there's all kinds of other ways that you can do embossing. Um, you also can get uh, different embossing colors, of course, which is what I like to do. I like to have the different colors of embossing powder. And it's really easy to do once you get the hang of it. This one, I, for whatever reason this morning, I was a little, little off and I couldn't um, quite sort out the embossing for the black portion here. I've since sorted it out, but you know what I did? <laughs> These are all... Um, these are black dots, so I just used black dots. One of them was just falling off there, but it's fine. Um, so I used black dots on my wings instead of doing the embossing. But again, I would probably do the embossing. So the stamp set is gone. Sorry, never to be seen again. There it is. So this is the stamp set. It's Hello Ladybug. And then the paper is called... Um, yeah, you'd think I would have that committed to memory by now, but nope. It's called Perfectly Penciled, and it's all black and white prints, which I really, really like. Very fond of it. I think I'll, I'll, I'll be ordering another package of this because I've already used about half of the package. But I think the black and white works well with the colors of the, um, the ladybug and, and the bees. It just really works well for me. Wow, what a big mess I've made. What a big mess I've made. So tomorrow, I'm not 100% sure I'll be on tomorrow, but we'll see how it goes. I'll try and give you a heads up. If, you're, um, if you get notifications from me, then you will know. Um, if you're going to order this, Kim, you really want to order this as well, because that's your ladybugs. Now, you could hold off on the, on the flower if you don't think you're going to do a lot of bees, but you could still do bees with the, with the stamps that are in here. But there's the ladybug punch, and then there's also the... Um, the small daisy punch and this daisy punch is great fun I, I use it for all kinds of things besides besides this but this daisy punch is really fun so right there you know add a few bits of of, uh, of cardstock and some dimensionals and some some uh, embellishments and you've you've got the potential to make all kinds of beautiful fun cards i really enjoyed making these today and they're not it, it is a fancy fold but it's not a difficult fancy fold how do we get the lines? Which lines are you talking about, love? The lines in the paper are already there. And this is that paper. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. I'm having... <coughs> oh, pardon me. I'm having terrible <coughs> allergies. And... Uh... And uh, the lines for the bees. It's the paper, and then I colored it. So here's a bee. Here's a bee that I that I um, cut out using the the paper, and then I just used my my blend, and I colored it. Thank you so much, Dorothy. I needed a blessing today. I don't know. I've never had allergies before, but last year and this year, and especially this year, I don't know whether it's West Kelowna. Or what the difference is i'm really struggling with allergies but i'm resisting the urge to have to get up in the morning and take a pill because you know i'm on enough medication i really don't want to add um any anything to it if i if i can get away with it but that's all it is is this punch with this dsp which is why i need to order more um or any you know there's lots of striped papers out there i don't i don't know you can also stripe your own using um using um your blends you can also make your own straight paper but i kind of like this paper i thought it was kind of fun and uh yeah so i hope you enjoyed that um almost an adult oh no i, I don't think i'm ever going to actually be an adult because you know what adulting is hard i mean it, it's hard i've seen people do it 
it's really difficult. So I'm just going to stay in my la la world where uh, where everything goes according to plan, and I don't have to do too much or think too much, and I just play. Yeah, I have two two um, Dorothy. I have two crafting rooms here. So one of them is my one of them is a sewing room, and one of them is a card room. So I just sort of get up in the morning and head down the hall and go, okay, do I go right or do I go left? So today was a right and tomorrow's going to be a left because I've enrolled in a craft um, show that's going to be at the uh, Grizzly Winery. It's really cool. I'm super excited. It's not till, it's not till Thanksgiving, which is good because I need the time. Uh, yeah, I am a little bit spoiled, Dorothy. I have to admit, I am just a little tad spoiled. But I'm going to need the time to do this. But... Um, in October 21st, I think, 21st, 22nd. So it's at the Grizzly Winery, which is fairly close to home, and it's two days. And what they do is they have all these vendors, plus live music, plus the parking lot is filled with food trucks. I mean, does it get any better than that, really? All I'm going to have to do is make sure that someone comes to, to spell me so I can go check out the food trucks, because they have a food truck there called the Lobster Pot, and I just can't even... I mean, that's just wow. And a taco one and bannock and all kinds of these great things. Oh, you do, Kim? Yeah, I'm making more of those. I'm, I make uh, these little cases, Dorothy, that have a zipper in them and some embroidery on them. And you can use them. For, they're originally designed for Kleenexes, but I actually use them for a deck of cards. You can use them if you're traveling and you want to pack your jewelry. Um, I don't know if you play Yahtzee, but they're perfect to keep your dice in. They're just kind of a multi-purpose, cute little zippered bag, and they're very popular. So I went out today, oh my God, shock of a lifetime. I went out today to buy some some more fabrics because I'm lacking variety in my zippered coin, uh, my zipper cases. Holy smokes, when did fabric get up to $29 a, a yard for some of it? And that's at Fabricland. That's not even a fancy quilt shop. That's Fabricland. The good news is if you have a membership, which I begrudgingly do have, um you you get a discount but i re i, I it, it bothers me because i ha it's been my experience i've been in this industry dorothy my whole life i had my own fab dealership i've sewn for a living i've quilted for a living i've taught it for as long as i can possibly remember and the thing that bothers me is when you buy a membership which costs you money um, the idea being that if you buy this membership, we're going to give you all kinds of discounts and all kinds of fabric. But the bottom line is, in my heart of hearts, I believe that they've marked the fabric up to ridiculous before giving you this discount. And I'm just resentful of that. But so far here in West Kelowna, I haven't found any alternatives. I know there's a great quilt shop in Summerland, which I hope to jump in the car and take a drive down and uh, see what that's like. But I guess the last time I bought fabric was probably, it was probably $19.99 a meter, and that was expensive. That was an expensive piece of fabric. So, a bit of a shock. However, um, I spent $100 today, and I'll certainly get more than that um, out of Kleenex cases and whatnot. So, I'll, uh, I'll be working on those tomorrow, kind of getting caught up on things. But I hope you back at four. It just depends on, on uh, what else goes on. Thank you, Kimmy. You're my biggest fan. <laughs> you are far and away my biggest fan. So if you if you can um, message me if you want the, the dimensions for this card, I'll be happy to give them to you. I'll just text them to you. So if you want the dimensions, that would be great. And I, you can catch me. I will post these cards when I get off of here. And you can also catch me on Instagram. And I'm also working on getting on YouTube. I posted... <laughs> I'm hilarious. I posted a video today and I was so proud of myself for posting a video today onto YouTube, my very first one. And then I went to post another one. I have no idea how I did the first one. So eh, I guess I'll figure it out again the same way I figured it out the first time. And maybe take notes. Maybe notes would be a good thing. I know you adore me, Kim. It's so nice to have such a big fan. Yes. All right. I will uh, text me for the dimensions, right? So I can put them back on your on your um on your text and i'll get those off to you as soon as i possibly can but i'm going to go off and have some dinner and see what my husband's been up to he's been setting up our trailer for our first camping trip um coming up on monday so hopefully i'll see you tomorrow and if not thank you so much for being here it's been a treat and i'll see you next time bye for now